Greetings and salutations, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well still, and welcome to today's bonus upload. Before we jump into it, a couple links. As you all know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, and channel membership is in the description below. Merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They all were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support this channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It doesn't cost you a cent. Click that like button. Takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon and folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because all these things, they really do help this channel to continue to grow and go. And yes, they definitely do matter. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's jump into today's bonus, shall we? All right, everybody. Today I have Donald Coleman Jr. back. He's going to share some encounters that happened to other people, um, some that he had minor involvement in, and some that he has heard over the years. Donald, how are you? Hello, Jeffrey. Thanks for having me back on. No problem. Thank you for coming back on. Um, we had been talking for a while, and uh, you just shared a, a encounter with me that didn't happen to you, but you had some minor involvement in. Um, can you share that encounter with the guests, please? Uh, yeah, I'll give you a little inside baseball. Uh, when I was on a, uh, Danielle Stedman's Dogman Diary before my <clears throat> episode got yanked because I gave out some information I shouldn't have, uh, this woman from uh, London, England, uh, on Facebook, wanted to be my friend. She's a medium psychic. And I thought, you know, I, I think I'll take this one. I never really dealt with them before on anything. And, uh, so she, uh, he, she and I got to talking and I asked her, I said, I'm going to give you the coordinates of Tennessee Highway 128 going across Pickwick Landing Dam to Highway 57 to Holiday Hills Road. What is in this area that you can, you know, do your remote viewing? What do you see in this area? And she said, well, right across the street from you in the behind Wind Springs Cove is a dog man. It's about seven to eight feet tall, a solid black, about four or five hundred pounds. And I said, I'll be dog. And uh, she, that's what you heard in 2015 coming out of that uh, uh Bacon lot across straight from your house. And so, uh, she, uh, I put, I asked her, she, she called me, she texted me at night one time. It was, you know, London, England, and people would damn on different hours and stuff. You know, uh, it's where it's night here, it's, it's day there and vice versa. But anyway, uh, she contacted me and she said, well, your dog man is on the move. I said, where's he going? And, and so, uh, I didn't know this. They had a Roman radius of 360 degrees, 50 to 70 miles out the range. It's, so that's a lot of area. That's Alabama, Tennessee, Mississippi they covered and stuff. So anyway, she said, it's going to a place called Hook's Bend. There's a, there's a, a camping resort there. I said, that's Big River Plantation. And she said, Hook's Bend. I said, that's Hook's Bend. I know exactly where that is. And that's uh, almost uh, up around the Salatillo, Tennessee, on the uh, Kentucky Lake, on the Tennessee River. And this uh, woman had come into my asthma rehab back in 2018. I've been in the hospital like four months. I'm not going to get into that now. But she came in my room and wanted to take a picture of that lady. I was like, hell, I don't feel like you're taking a picture. And I go, I thought, and then I had just like six cents kick in, I thought. Hmm. So I let her take my picture, and I said, let me ask you a question since you came in my room. 
I said, I know there's panthers out here. I've seen them. I know there's mountain lions. I've seen them. And I know there's bobcats. I've seen them in the neighborhood. I've seen it. And so uh, I said, but he ever had a creature or something weird happen to your family that you can't explain? And she said her father had been, he was, he had he drank and he was in a truck. I said, I said, are you really from this area? She said, yeah, I grew up, was raised on the Tennessee River on Kentucky Lakeside. I'm from this area. And I said, oh, really? And I said, uh, she said, well, the only thing I could tell you that was weird was my dad came up missing. And we looked, looked, searched, had the sheriff's department and TBI and everybody looking for him. And they couldn't find hiding their hair of him. And the bass fisherman uh, got snagged and he uh, kept pulling, pulling, pulling. And uh, he pulled up something and he took his, he had some kind of a spotlight that could go in the water and he spotlighted and saw the tires of the truck that was flipped upside down. So he called the sheriff's department and they sent a rescue squad out. And as they pulled as they got the tag number, they ran it. It belonged to that woman that was interviewing me in my hospital room, uh, I mean, rehab center room. And that, that was her dad that had flipped over. Sharon Russell told me, my dog man goes to Hooker's Bend, which is up near Salatello, where this truck was found. And I said, I said, well, what was left of him? She said, from his knee to his uh, his breastplate, and nothing else. In other words, his legs were gone below the knee, his feet, arms, and legs were gone, and his head was gone. I thought, good night. I thought, I know we got captures. I know it ain't that big, and uh, there's only one window broken on it. And uh, I looked at her. And I said, you know, I really get a. I get a strong vibe to tell you this, and I said, "I know information I can't, I can't give to you at this time. I'm sorry, but your daddy did commit. He did not commit suicide. Something jumped out, chased him. He was running for his life. Was when these dog men come after you, you're in, you drop into a primal fear mode, and you act totally different. You know, you just about pee and." shit yourself, you know, right there trying to get away from these things. And I'm thinking that's what happened to her her dad. When they pulled the truck out, that was all she was crying. Out. And, you know, I said, ma'am, I said, look, I put my hand on the Bible. I said, look, ma'am, I'm going to tell you the truth. I said, the daddy can commit suicide. He ran into the lake by accident. He was trying to get away from something. Because right in that line from where he was found, to where that dog man that the remote viewer told me fits perfect. That's crazy. That is crazy. <clears throat> but she can't tell law enforcement because they, they're going to, you can't, I don't trust law enforcement hard and can't, I don't even talk to them. I don't have nothing to do with them or anybody in Tennessee law enforcement or Mississippi. I'm just the way I am. Right. And, uh, uh, well, I was out in the water, I mean, out in the, we went from uh, Britain Branch to uh, the beginning of the Ten Time Waterway, and I, I said, let's go back. There's too many boats out. It's on a Saturday about 10 days ago or something like that, two weeks ago. And uh, I, 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 I got past Grand Harbor. I told my brother-in-law, Gene Smith, I said, here, take the, take the uh, I want you to drive the boat. <laughs> and once we got into the Tennessee water, guess who I saw coming looking right at us was a Tennessee game warden. I said, man, I dodged the bullet that time. Because <laughs> <laughs> they pulled me over. I'm in the boat, but they you get stopped. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah. What, other, uh, what other encounters that you've heard just, you know, randomly talking to people? Well, the encounter up at Real Foot Lake, uh, it's up in northwest Tennessee. It's uh, in Obine and Lake Counties. It's on the Obine County side. This couple uh, didn't want to take the Eagle Tour on the pontoon boat. They wanted to take their vehicle and go on the, the uh, roads that uh, kind of go between two swamps. It's like they're cutting trees. They've got a roadway there that stays dry, but there's swamp on either side. And they were uh, 
that had the 35 millimeter camera to go take the shots of the eagle. And they heard a growl or something coming out, coming out, and they were running. They saw two dog men, and they were running for their lives. I mean, they were screaming and hollering, and they got to the car, got inside. Dog man ripped the moon roof completely off, grabbed both of them, and, out, and took them both out. And that guy was filming and taking pictures all the time, fighting for his life, but he was shooting the, the 35 millimeter camera. And they, you know, reported missing. And they, uh, so they contacted the O'Brien County Sheriff's Department, who then contacted the Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency. And then they got the TBI, Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, in on it. And they backtracked. They found the guy's car bloody and torn to shreds on the inside. It's claw marks all down the inside of it. And they did a, a search of the area. And it was about a year later, some uh, some boys were running ATVs, four-wheeling, all down in that area. And they found a, they saw a snake going to a brush pile. They were going to kill the snake. They had a gun. And he looked in there and goes, he see some kind of silver black looking. And so they dug out that 35 millimeter camera. Well, they took it back home. The guy said, this guy's got a computer chip. I can download this on my computer. So he downloads and calls mom and dad in the room and they see these horrific pictures of these dog men tearing these people apart. And the guy was still filming the whole time. I guess, you know, nervous twitch. He had a uh, kind of remote control button. And he just kept punching it, punching it. It took all kind of pictures of these things. Parents called the Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency, and then they contacted the federal game warden. <clears throat> and I think, I think real put, I know it's a state park there, but somehow they have, the game wardens have jurisdiction over real put because it's an earthquake lake. And so they went in there to the boys' home and did an interview with them. And then they said, well, show us the picture. He goes, let me go back there. And the guy the teenager showed him how to get to the pictures. He said, will you please leave the room? I need to see them for myself. Well, he uh, he saw them, and he pulled the chip out that had the pictures, put in his chip, put it in the computer, and, and crashed his computer. It wiped out the whole memory of that computer. And uh, he left with the you know, I need to. We need to take this into uh, uh, as evidence because this couple is still missing. They've never found the couple. They're still missing. And that boy's out of computer. When the government comes in, especially the federal government, if you're not careful, you can, they can require eminent domain on your property, especially if you have a lot of these cryptic encounters and stuff, and take your property away from you. So, you, you know, you don't mess with the federal government at all. No. So that's, that's, and then there's another case. These, these bicyclists were coming out of New Orleans, and they were going to go up on the Great River Road. It's in segments you can travel on it. And they're on the Tennessee side going up the Great River Road, and they went up toward Fort Pella Prison and Fort Pella State Park. They decided they're going to camp and spend the night in the tent. And uh, a dog, two dog men came out and grabbed them and drug them out of their tents, tore the campsite up, and dug them about 50 feet out in the woods and tore them all to pieces. So this elderly couple came by about 10 o'clock that next morning and saw the bodies and called the uh, the uh, park rangers who and called the sheriff's department and the Tennessee Highway Patrol. And they all came out there. And they all wrote it up as a uh, pack of wild dogs. Yeah, me and you were talking, and i that's one thing that you and I both agreed on, is, you know, these accounts, the like the, the teacher in North Carolina, the doctor from Georgia, um, they all blame wild dogs. I mean, we very seldom see packs of wild dogs just traveling around you know it's it's something that you don't see and that really doesn't exist in well another another story is uh uh on it was on dog man stories i think it was on my episode i was on that deal but uh 
anyway, uh, she was talking, uh, the woman, the, 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 the host, I'm not going to make her name. Anyway, uh, she was saying that forest rangers up in the Appalachian Trail, and I, I'm not sure where it actually starts. If it's, I think it's in north, northeast Georgia. I think it's where it starts and goes all the way up, you know, the Carolinas and Tennessee and Virginia and all them places up there. But uh, she said the forest rangers have been recovering uh, people that are on these mountain bikes and stuff, and the bikes are all tore up, and they're, they're finding body pieces on the trail. In other words, you know, like a hand or leg or foot, but no other part of the body. You know, so yeah. the, the U.S. forest rangers are reporting that. That's that's just crazy. That is crazy. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, and then... then uh, on the uh, another story was uh, between Fulton and Columbus on the Tennessee Tom Beebe Waterway. Uh, it was, they they call it the I think it uh, what I remember that story was a, two men were going fishing and uh, and so they were you know fishing one was fishing fifty yards from each other where they could see each other and a guy went in the woods they go to the bathroom and he stumbled onto a uh like one of these uh, things bigfoot deals you know like out of wood and stuff yep. and he looked he looked at like an old teepee shelter and he looked in there and saw uh man's clothing tore up, tore up with blood on it and it had a, a guy had a billfold so he told him to, uh, they went, they left it where it is, and uh, they, I think they put ribbons or something where they find it, and they got the uh, proper authorities, uh, Wildlife Fisheries and Parks, Game Warden, and probably the local county sheriff's department came in there, and they took pictures and everything like that, and took the, the statement down, and uh, they, you know, took uh, got the information off the bill phone, took it with them as evidence, and um, and they told those two bass fishermen, don't ever come back here again. You stay out of here. Hmm. This is, this is, they put you under some type of, uh, well, like a crime scene, you hmm. know, and we have a crime scene, a murder, uh, sent a yellow tape, well, they yellow and orange tape that and said, this is a crime scene, a uh, federal crime scene, so you can't, you're in here, we're going to put you under federal authority. You know, we're going to, you're going to serve some time. So they, they scared the fishermen away. And there's a, they found several articles, articles of clothing with blood on them from different people. Huh. Now, so, you are, how close to the LBL? Uh, I'm five hours away from LBL. Okay. But during your career of law enforcement, I'm sure you heard some stories out of the LBL. Well, the only thing I heard is uh, when I was a public safety officer in South Portland in 1982 and 83, I, the dispatcher went home, so I had to go and dispatch other patrol unit went on patrol. So I was answering telephones. So that was for 911. We didn't have all that stuff. Right. So this lady called, and she was crying and squalling on the phone. I said, ma'am. You're going to have to calm down. I can't understand a word you're saying. You just tell me what's going on. Well, she said they had a home invade. And uh, I said, do you work for, do you work for a uh, bank? Like it's on, you know, the FDIC, the federal, you know, banking industry. Or you, does your bank have the FDIC brand? No, I don't work at a bank. I'm thinking at one thirty in the morning, I get a six cents this bogus call. But I said, I can't hang up because it could be, you know, it's a 50-50 call here. And uh, I said, well, why did you call the, uh, the O'Brien County Sheriff, Wixie County Sheriff, Kentucky State Police, and those two sheriff's department in Kentucky? And she said, nobody would answer the phone except you. Ain't this my lucky day? <laughs> and so uh, I get on the low band, and I call the Memphis, Tennessee Highway, the Highway Patrol in Memphis, Tennessee Headquarters. 
I asked to speak to a commanding officer at 1033, which means emergency traffic, uh, possible 1053 or 4 or whatever the codes were back then, kidnapping and uh, home invasion. I said, if you need to call me ASAP on public service, which is the telephone. And so he called me up. What he got? I told him what I had. I said, I just got a feeling the boat was called, but I don't really. I, you have to make a call because you're a higher authority than I am. I can't send the units to that house. It's too far out of my jurisdiction. And trying to wake up O'Brien County Sheriff, I can go over and be on the door and I won't come to the door. So uh, what do you think we ought to do? And the first thing he said, how far away is this location from the LBL? And I'm thinking, what the hell has LBL got to do with this? See, the LBL murders took place in March of 82. This was in December, about the, about December the 11th or something like that. He asked me that question. Well, I didn't find out about the LBL murders until Lance Charker told me about them in 2015. Right. So that was three months before the LBL murders. That was, uh, well, that was like seven months before the LBL. Okay. That was in that was in March, all right. Yeah, seven months. Uh, no, nine months. Oh, okay. So this was December of two thousand, or yeah, December of nineteen eighty. This was December eleventh, nineteen eighty two, and the murders happened about the middle of uh, March of eighty two. And uh, well, if that when was I would go December of eighty two, it'd only be three months. So it was December of eighty three to be nine months, right? No, it was December of eighty two. The the murders happened in March of eighty two. Right. So it was March to December. It was, it was three months before. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's crazy. But anyway, it, it whatever the time was, it uh that's when the state trooper asked me and I go, What's this got to do with that? You know? It's just you to remember odd things like that because it's like, well, how are we talking about LPL when this lady's Crying about his home invasion. I said, well, what do you want to do? It's your call to make. You know, hang up? He said, no. You stay on that line and you call everybody you can. I'm gonna, We're going to wake some people up. They woke up everybody. Right. And so when I was on the line with the lady talking to her, I didn't know. I, I heard gunshots. I said, no, I called back. I talked to that captain. We got gunshots. Oh, we got a hot zone. You go into a hot zone. That means there's gunfire. Is going on, and it turned out I was right. She was uh, faked a home alone. I mean, for that, you know. Right. And that's back in the 80s. You know, you saw, of course, you know, people, how screwy you are with 911 calling up, can you help me with my homework? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, only in the south. <laughs> well, up north, too, believe me. Um, yeah, but. How close was she to LBL? Was that right there? I would say she was about 90 miles away. Okay. Okay, now you think about this. The LBL, where she, I mean, LBL, where she was, and where those uh, real foot like people went missing, man, you go a straight line. Yeah, and they travel how they travel. They don't need, you know, they just go. Like, yeah, like, and so they use, like, they use uh, river corridors, creeks, swamps, Abandoned backcountry roads, uh, railroad tracks, and they had the, well, my dog man that lives across the street from me has a Roman radius of 360 degrees, 40 to 70 miles outside that zone. You can be in southwest Tennessee, northwest Alabama, northeast Mississippi. That's a lot of area. Yeah. That's a lot of area. So, you see what you got to realize, these things are solid black. They can run down, you know, I'm sure the barges have probably picked a few of them up, but they don't say nothing. Yeah, they don't So you know, they're easily to hide. There's one encounter that you shared with me um, just tonight, and uh, I, I don't remember who you heard it from, but it's uh, it's pretty graphic. Um and if you oh yeah, this was uh, share that, but but try to be as less graphic as you can, please. Okay, uh, 
I'm not sure where the Appalachian Trail begins. I know it ends in Maine. And I think it's in North East Georgia. And I think that's where it uh, comes out. And uh, this uh, people like to go ride their mi- mountain bikes, you know, just ride with bicycles with the knobby tires and stuff on it. That's real big up there. And they, they come out of Atlanta and all these other uh, suburbs suburb north of Atlanta. And they come up the Appalachian Trail, and they like to ride the, the trail. So some of the uh, bikers had come up missing. So they contacted the U.S. Forest Service, which is over that in the United States. Uh, well, it would be outside the uh, Great Smoky Mountains National Forest, so it, they would be in jurisdiction. They call the Sheriff's Forest, Forest Service, and they would go out and they would find body parts spread out across the, uh, you know, about a mile or two spread out and, you know, uh, clothing ripped and tore the threads, blood on it, and uh, they would find that. And of course, that's that's covered up under Veritas. And uh, I was telling, I was telling Jeffrey, I was at the uh, LBL last time I was there was like 2010. And, uh, anyway, uh, I was at New Johnsonville and my, we're going to put in the boat in. I got the monoculars out. I looked at, I said, Scott, it's white capping out there. You know what that means? I said, I'm not, I'm not, I'm going to take the truck and trailer and go on to Lake Barker State Resort Park and meet over there. So he went on. And I drove over there and was waiting for me at, at, down at the marina at the boat ramp. And he came in about a three or four hours later and came in. We I hauled his uh, boat out of water for him, and we were looking it over. This big old game where he's about six, seven, three fifty. Oh, he's a big old guy. I said, man, y'all play for NFL. <laughs> you got me. I feel like a midget compared to you, you know. But uh, he came over. He said, uh, where's your fishing gear? I said, it's a ski boat. They ain't no fishing boat. He said, uh, what are y'all doing up there? I said, we grew up on Pickwick Life, so I just want to go sightseeing, see the eagles and stuff like that, and just lay the land. We're not, we're not, we're not carrying constant brain. I mean, we said, go ahead and search the big boat. You want to so he searched it. He said, no, you're clean. I just could have told you that. You know, and, uh, anyway, kind of, he was kind of a grizzly type person. He, I, he, he got on the wrong side of me real quick. And, uh, so Scott and I went up to, uh, the, the inn and got a room. And, uh, the restaurant's really good. Here we're up to the Lake Barker State Resort Park. They got excellent food at that party. Really good. And so I was over eating Scott and he wanted to call his, his uh, girlfriend up and in Atlanta. So I said, I'm going to go sit at this table with all these game, the game wardens and the uh, park rangers and uh, other law enforcement. I think the Kentucky State Police, big old tape. So I'm gonna, I think I'm going to see if I can glean any information off of them. And I, I, I okay, more stared at me. I said, well, he wants to have a private call with girlfriend. That's why I came over here, you know, to kind of kill his curiosity. And I sat real quiet, and I just kind of, put my back to the table and I heard them talking the code names of what they call uh, Sasquatch and Dog Man. They're called Black Dog and uh, Black Bear. And then, of course, Jeffrey told me it's also uh, named Black Cow. I have heard that before. But I, this, they were just talking about Black Bear but Black Dog and they, and they were talking in hushed tones. I said, mm-hmm. And that really, well, Ron Strikers wanted to tell me about, uh, on phantommonster.com, he told me when I was on his site in February 2015 about, he said, Google the beast of LBL. I said, well, I never heard of L- the beast. What do y'all talk about? And so when I read that Jan Thompson article, I said, good night. You know, and I got to, I didn't put two and two together until, one of the stories I shared, I might be on Jeff's, so I'm not sure, about that South Fulton Police Department uh, call that the woman 
how far are you from LDL? The state trooper goes, how far are you from LDL? I said, it's about 90 miles. But you parallel the real foot encounter, they have the missing cup to the uh, ladies encounter, which turned out to be false, to the LVL, it's straight parallel down the Tennessee Kentucky line. I mean, directly. And there have been all kinds of cryptic encounters in that area, all the way up to Metropolis, Illinois, all the way over towards St. Genevieve, Missouri, on the Mississippi. That's a, that's a real hot spot area up through there. And what I told Jeffrey is that these creatures are using all kind of corridors, which like the old rivers, the old abandoned sloughs, streams, creeks, uh, uh, abandoned railroads, uh, the farm roads and back roads, and that's where they're how they're traveling and 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 doing it. Right, you're solid the black. You're not gonna see them unless they run in front of your car. Right. I heard actually there's two more. Uh, it's on the Ohio River, uh, a little bit to the east of Brandenburg, Kentucky, but on the Ohio side, and. Uh, a couple were, you know, honeymooning out there on the back country roads, and two dog men came up and killed both of them. Very graphic. I'm not going to go into it. Because there's kids, but they don't need to hear this. But yeah. that was a counter. And in another counter, a guy took a... <clears throat> I talked to him on the phone. He told me about this encounter. And uh, it happened down at Scruggs Recreation Plant, a uh, place on the Ten Time Waterway, where I told you in 2007, I was in August, walking down the road for exercise. Right in that area where that brown fence is, I felt something weird, bad vibe, and I ran back to my car and got out of there. But when I talked to this person in 2016, he told me he took a, a report from two teenagers on a four-wheeler, those ATVs, and they were, there's an old sloop back there. I do the map if you stir up the old sloop back there. They were running, you know, having a good time, and they think they this dog man, two of them, got after them. And they saw it coming, and man, they were running their lives, screaming and crying, and they were doing up speeds of 45 and 50 miles an hour, and that dog man was, took the, the jack off one and scratched the back seat of the other. And they were running down all these back country road stuff, and they just finally out ran. He said they were scared to death. And so the, the reason this guy took the call, because they, at that time, they were still under federal jurisdiction of the Ten Time Waterway Authority, and they couldn't tell that to local authorities, they'd get in trouble. So it, he, they told a cricket investigator that story, who referred it to me. So uh, there's all kinds of stuff. There's many stories that don't go, you know, real deep. They're all open. Yeah. Like, you take a salt, I mean, a pepper shaker and pepper over your uh, paint pages, it's going to hit, you know, be hot, this, this, and that. Uh, Donald, for some heart. reason, Donald, real quick, your phone's breaking up for some reason. Did you do something different? Uh, okay. Uh, how's it now? That's good. Okay, I live in Southern Hardin County, Tennessee, and uh, on Wind Springs Cove. And, and uh, anyway, oh, shoot. <laughs> oh, yeah. And this guy named Robbie was spraying my house back in 2017. And uh, about, uh, I asked him, Robbie, you ever had any weird creature encounters? Besides panthers, mountain lions, and, and uh, bobcats, he goes, yeah. I said, where was it? He said, right across the, the – he said, it's now the woods of Pickwick, Lakeside Southern Division. I said, over there by the, across from the Pickwick State Park and the Hard and Authority Dock? He goes, yeah. I said, tell me what happened. Well, here in the, back in the early 80s, that, that was – very, that that was wilderness back there. We're talking about thousands of acres of wilderness. 
anyway, uh, he told me that his friends were, I said, how many of in your group? He said, six. They all had automatic shotguns. They was out, you know, deer hunting. He said, there's a big brush pile. He heard something. They heard something, and they thought it was a deer, so they all got down in firing positions. And uh, he said he heard a scream, and up jumps a, some type of beast. He was, I said, well, what was it? He said, it looked like a wild man. I said, somebody been living out wild in the woods? He goes, yeah. He said he was naked from the waist down and hairy from the waist up and let out a scream and went running off in the, I, I said, he's barefoot, right? He goes, yeah. And he went running out in the woods. I said, and he was making the trail. I said, well, why didn't y'all shoot at it? He said, we didn't know what it was. <laughs> That's crazy. And that's five miles from where I live. Yeah, yeah. You live deep in the woods, that's for sure. Yeah, so, you know, it's, it's, <clears throat> you got to realize, like, my area opened up, Holiday Hills opened up in 62, Tim Tom Waterway, 74 to 85 is under construction. Uh, a guy told me uh, the last encounter was he was uh, working on a waterway camping. Instead of going home all the time, he just camped out where he worked. He had to get up and he's at work. He saved money on gas and stuff. And uh, he had a dog man encounter. And this thing was kind of an orange, reddish orange uh, fur. But it had a, the snout looked like the size of an alligator. You know, that size, the teeth were, you know, like that. And it was about seven feet tall. And it was walking down a, a, an old nature trail, and it was eating roadkill. And he happened, you know, he was about maybe a quarter of a mile from it, and he happened to see it and took out his binoculars and got a good look at it. I go, I bet that's, <laughs> I bet that stopped you from camping on that waterway, didn't he? he goes, you sure did. Yeah, definitely. So you know, it's the sometimes our exposure to things are not, you know, it just like 20 minutes here, 10 minutes there, five minutes there. My dog man encounters have been extremely up close. It's caught my attention, but it put me in such primal fear. It took me a long time to reveal it and to who do I reach out to to reveal it on. So it, it took me, the, the Sasquatch encounter, of 81 took 37 years for me to talk about. And then when I talked about that encounter, I went to a behavioral therapist in uh, Savannah, and Miss Sue talked to me. She goes, oh, you're making that up. You're just hallucinating. I said, ma'am, there ain't no way I can hallucinate what I saw that night. And I said, I saw it. I was there. You were not. Well, I don't believe a word you say. I said, all right. I said, do you like? what do you like to do? you like to golf? She said, I love it. You go out to a country club, or do you go out on these like like down in Myrtle Beach where you got swamps and stuff around the the uh, she likes to do that. I said one of these days, Miss Sue, you're going to see something, and it will blow your mind. Please call me on my cell phone when that happens. I will put you in touch with the right people to share your encounter because, ma'am, believe it or not, these things are, are real. I wish they weren't. None of us do, but they are. Yeah. Donald, it's always a pleasure having you on. Um, thank you for coming back tonight and just shooting the breeze with me. It was great. Well, uh, thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for the text message. All right, buddy. Donald Coleman Jr. Wow. The man that put me in touch with Claudia Ackley as well as Tim Kungo Baker. I hope you guys all enjoyed this interview as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. I truly, truly value Donald's friendship and our chats. He is a super nice guy. Thank you for supporting the channel, guys. Your support is what makes this channel special and what continues for it to grow and go. Everyone, please stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant, keeping an eye on our children, our pets, our family, and friends. These creatures are real, they're out there, they're dangerous. Share this information with the people you love and care about, and it may just help save their lives someday. Until next time, never stop asking questions, and never 
Stop searching for those answers.